Okay, so here's video three of the Coastline series. I had to pause my video, I'm afraid, because I had a passerby where I'm sitting is actually on the south coast footpath. Um, so as you can imagine, it's uh, slightly embarrassing for anyone who's walking past. Anyway, so where I am now, as you can see, it is simply a series of landslips. And this area at the bottom there is completely unmanaged, uncontrolled succession there. You've got complete rewilding schemes going on, which is a fantastic really to see nature at work. However, it's a bit controversial because some people have decided that the grassland that it was used for grazing sheep on before actually was better for biodiversity and for the species living here. Uh, however, in 1924, they decided to stop that because it was just too much to manage for various reasons and they decided to just let trees grow. As you can see down here, uh, this is what's happened. It's complete, um, complete rewilding, which I think is, has been fantastic for woodland walks, for obvious carbon capture and perhaps as a bit of a natural defence for the trees, uh, sorry, for the cliff line that is behind them here. So you can see, if I zoom up here, you can see that there actually is a little bit of coastal management, a couple of artificial groins, but most of that is actually rock fall at low tide. Any coastal management that was put down there, which I will revisit in my next video, is actually not really in use and not really being maintained anymore. So just to sort of take you, give you a little mini tour from the top here, my year 12s and my, my year 13s may well remember this walk. Uh, so you've got the cliff line walk that passes along here. You can walk all the way from Dover. Um, you can carry on. You can keep going to Cornwall if you really want. And just to take you along here, this place in the distance might seem quite familiar to you. Beautiful town of Folkestone over here. So looking down and you have got, as you can see here, your chalk cliffs. You've actually got a little balcony down there where someone actually lives. And, mm, rather them than me, I think, but uh, certainly get a sea view. And if you look down here, you've got what we call the apron, the concrete apron, which essentially is a combination of, um, sorry, it's very difficult to see because it's quite bright, but yes, the concrete apron is down here. You can actually see the remains of some railway tracks on that from where they had to transport all of the chalk. Tons and tons of chalk which they've chucked underneath it and then put the concrete on top of just to try and hold this, this area in place. Because if you look around here you will see that these, these uh, cliffs are always on the move. Why are they always on the move? Well because you've got chalk essentially on top of clay. And if you look, you have got actually quite an interesting example of what we call a discordant coastline along here, because you've got an area here of alternating bands of chalk and clay. The chalk is mainly on top of a clay. You've got a tiny bit of green sand and you've got some mixed in sandstone over there. So what you can see is a little bay and a headland where obviously you've got some less resistant rock and the more resistant rock. So what is happening is when it rains, it's falling on this permeable rock, which is chalk. Okay, and what's happening is the chalk becomes fully saturated. That water can only go so far down because underneath the chalk is a bed of clay. So it sits on the clay until what happens is it ends up pulling the whole of that layer of chalk forward. So what you've got is rotational slip. So you've got the upper layer of chalk slipping up over the underlying clay. And probably a better example of that is back the other direction towards Dover, which I will return to now. And I will show you some of the mass movement. 